Hi guys, my name is Trisha. Welcome to 5th grade science with Alston. Today's topic is forces in motion. This video will cover the relationship between force and motion. As always, our videos consist of 8 to 15 review questions. These are all timestamped in the description box. If you get one wrong, we recommend listening to the explanation after the question, but if you get one right, feel free to skip ahead. If you have any questions with specific topics, make sure to check out our links for further reference page down in the description box. Here we have a list of all our questions along with specific links to help you dive deeper into the challenging questions. All right, let's get started with the first question. If a ball is rolled in a straight line, what happens to the ball if more friction is applied? Well, the answer is that as there is more friction applied, the ball will slow down. This is because friction is a resistance to movement that is made by two objects rubbing against each other. So for example, the friction between your shoe and the ground on a rainy day is what keeps you from slipping and falling. When there's more friction, there's more resistance to a moving force, which causes the force to become less strong, and vice versa. Let's move on to question two. Is it easier to stop a small car or a large truck when both of them are moving at the same speed? Well, the answer is the smaller car. This is because the small car weighs less, which causes the force of the small car to be less than the force of the larger truck. Weight affects force, so the lighter something is, the less force it has, and vice versa, the heavier something is, the more force it has. The less force an object has, the easier it is to stop. Let's move on to question three. Johnny has a baseball, and he drops it from his balcony. Why does it fall? Well, the answer is gravity, something we've all heard of at least once. Gravity is an invisible force that pulls objects towards other, bigger objects. For example, everything on Earth is pulled downwards by gravity since Earth is the biggest object. Since nothing was holding up the baseball, the Earth pulled it down. Gravity is a force of attraction. All right, let's move on to question number four. If Michael runs at a speed of eight miles per hour, and runs for half an hour, how far does he run? Well, the answer is four miles. We know this because Michael's speed was eight miles per hour and he ran for exactly half an hour. To get the distance, you have to multiply his speed by his time. All right, so let's do that here. We know Michael ran for eight miles per hour, and he ran for half an hour. So we multiply eight by one half, and we get eight over two, which is four. So Michael's speed was eight miles per hour. You multiply that by how long he ran, which was half an hour, and then you get the distance, which was four miles. All right, let's move on to question five. Mary goes for a swim. She swims four miles in two hours. What is her speed? Well, the answer is two miles per hour. Mary's total distance was four miles. She swam that distance in two hours. To find her speed, you need to divide her total distance by the time it took her to swim. All right, so let's do that. So Mary's total distance was four miles. And if she ran that distance in two hours, we wanna divide by two to figure out how far she traveled in one hour. So we'll divide four by two, which equals two. So Mary swam two miles per hour to reach the total distance of four miles in two hours. 
All right, moving on to our next question. Jason is going on a run. How far is Jason from his starting point after five minutes? The answer is 15 meters. When you look at the graph, Jason is five meters away after the first minute. You can see that right here where it says the time is one minute and the distance is five meters. So after that, he remains at a constant speed, meaning he doesn't move until the third minute, which you can see right there. After that, he starts to run again and he finally reaches 15 meters at five minutes. Moving on to our last question of this video. A truck is carrying fish. If some of the fish fall off the truck and its mass decreases, but it still has the same amount of force, what will happen to its speed? The answer is that it will become faster. It'll become faster because it has less mass but the same amount of force. An object with less mass will always need less force to push it, especially compared to an object with more mass. If an object with less mass has a larger force, it'll go faster. I hope this video was helpful. As I mentioned before, we have a links for further reference page in our description box below. I recommend you go here if you have any questions about specific topics or just want to practice more. If you have any other questions, please let us know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, and I hope to see you next time.